Hey guys, and welcome to Little Pepper Canola Time It Is. Uh, I came across this video um, of former Bethel prophecy teacher um, reveals information about BSM, um, BSSM. Um, huh. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna list. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let it play for a few minutes, um, and then let you guys make a decision on that. Um, but I really, I want to really encourage people um, to understand something. Um, when we show these videos, what we're trying to get you to understand is to get you to read your Bible and pray every day. We have to stop relying on being spoon fed from church and start reading your Bible. I'm not saying church is bad. I'm saying to you, in order for you to progress in your walk with Christ, in order for you to grow, in order for you to um, make, uh, you know, correct discernment, it's about reading your word. In fact, in one of the places, he's going to actually speak about it um, and, and say, and I'll interrupt it as well, where he begins to talk about how he was doing certain things, but he wasn't reading the word. You see, a lot of times when, when abuse takes place, it's because people are not reading the word. It's not because the pastor is really, really, really sick and slick. It's because we don't read our word. Um, and actually, we don't go back and read things, um, you know, in whole power and whole chapters and stuff like that. And then we just class it as, um, you know, this is the man of God, etc., etc., saying what they're saying. But let's let's really begin to be a generation that are going to be Bereans. And here's what they're saying and say, actually, I'm going to read that. And I'm going to deep it and I'm going to see what, I, what, I, what, I, what, I, what the word is really saying. So let's just play it and see what happens, talk to you and see what you'll think. All right. All right. Make sure if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for notifications. And I appreciate y'all. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to introduce you to a friend of mine, a brother in Christ. This is Oscar Watmore, and he's coming to us from England today. Uh, Oscar and some of his associates have written some books. Um, I've got a couple of them it's, that I highly recommend, A Hidden Path and Narrow is the Way. The links are in the uh, description of the video below, and uh, also their contact details of this group of people who've come out of new apostolic reformation deception. And Oscar's story is very compelling because he was teaching prophecy at an affiliate of Bethel Reading, uh, Bethel Supernatural Ministry uh, affiliate in England. So Oscar, thank you so much for joining me today because um, this is something we have a lot of questions about. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's, it's really good to, to be on. So. So where do we begin now? What, um, how did you get involved with teaching prophecy? <laughs> um, uh, well, I first, um, I got into uh, a vineyard church um, back in 2003. And um, I've never been in a vineyard church before. Um, and uh, within, within a few years, that, that became very um, kind of heavily influenced by Bethel. Um, and a lot of the teaching that went on in the church, you know, became more and more sort of Bethel um, stuff, like materials drawn, drawn from, from Bethel and, and the, you know, the, the, the main sort of speakers there, Bill Johnson, um, Danny Silk, Chris Barth, and that kind of thing. Um, and um, yeah, some some point along the way, um, they started a, a BSSM, a Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, subsidiary or franchise, whatever you'd call it. Um, and yeah, I was one of the leaders because I, I was already a leader um, in, in the house groups and uh, did some of the preaching on Sundays and that kind of thing. What were the methods that you were using? I mean, were they prescribed by Bethel Reading, or how did you know? How yeah, to so mm -hmm. yeah, so we we basically we had course materials that that came from Bethel, um, and um, the kind of uh, the way that a session would run is we would watch a a video of a lecture, you know, from BSSM, um, and then we'd follow the same study notes and that kind of stuff. A lot of it involved just like playing games, um, literally, and they call them games as well, prophecy games. Um, just things like um, you, you, you get in like two lines with, you know, groups of people facing each other um, and 
you know, one person would close their eyes um, and the other person wouldn't. And then the person with their eyes closed would have to try and say things about the, the other person, like not knowing who it was um, and sort of um, just whatever comes into your mind, you know, random stuff. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and then, and then, and then uh, there's another one. Uh, where you'd you'd be again you'd have your eyes shut and someone would put their hand on your shoulder from behind and you had to guess who it was prophetically (laughs) so it you you i know that you have come out of this now and you don't believe in this anymore but at the time but at the time did you think that this was from god did you think yeah i actually did yeah um i you know i i i believed you know, sort of continuation of the gifts, uh, which I, I'm kind of, I'm somewhere on the fence now. You know, I, I wouldn't call myself a cessationist, but then I'm, neither am I really a continuationist. I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle, but anyway. Um, and you compare but, everything to scripture. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The idea being that all of the gifts in the Bible, um, everybody should better have a, have a crack at, have a go at doing um, even though it's quite clear, actually, when you really read the Bible, that it's not, they're not, not every gift is for everyone, you know, that's quite clear, really. Um, <clears throat> but um, it was pretty much assumed that if you were a Christian um, and therefore had the Holy Spirit, that you could prophesy, just like, you know, there's the belief, the erroneous belief that. Um, all Christians can speak in tongues. You know, it's the same sort of thing. Um, which, of course, again, the Bible makes very clear that that's not the case. But, um, but I wasn't so much intrigued in my Bible. <laughs> um, so as you heard quite clearly there, he said, obviously, he wasn't too much reading into his Bible. See, when we're dealing with, when we're dealing with the kingdom of God, um, we're dealing with um, the truths of God. God has inspired, the Bible says that the whole, the word of God is an inspired word of God. And this is what is God breathed. Therefore, when the fact that we've been graced, um, the fact that we've been graced with the word of God uh, means that we can have um, the ability to begin to read and get the counsel of God within the word of God. Um, and, you know, the, the 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 trouble is sometimes in Christendom is that people are rushing to get the full understanding all in one go. Um, and just like school, you don't get, you know, you don't start doing algebra from the very beginning. They've got to teach you the basics first. And when they teach you the basics, then you can begin to understand the more deeper things. Pythagoras theorem and, you know, what's the other guy's name? I don't know what his name is. But it's all, this is what, this is what Christendom is about. It's a growth. It's a, t- you know, and spending time with the Lord. And I think, you know, um, we need to be invested in, in in getting people to read their Bible and encouraging it. You know, I love I love Bible study groups where, you know, if you can find one, please, as well. It's also helpful as well. Um, but yes, Bible study groups are always good because they just they put the person into a place where they have to start reading their Bible and have to start deep in certain things. Because what he just said here is what a lot of times when people are dealing with erroneousness and um, dealing with um, people that are false, the person often isn't in the word because the, the way to fake somebody is, is for them not to know the truth. If I know what my reflection looks like, you can't fake me with a different reflection. I know what I look like. I know what a reflection looks like. So therefore, when you bring the false one, I, I can tell. So what we're trying to do is get the word of God into, we're meant to eat this word of God, eat the Bible, um, you know, as much as possible to be able to... Um, understand our reflection and what we look like which is that we're conforming to the image of the son of christ jesus and that's the most important thing and when you begin to do that you begin to realize you're discerning without actually no no, it's not it's not discerning is not this spiritual magical um you know thing where you start saying "Mm, i I discern the spirit no 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 it's simply literally that you as you begin to as you begin to and remember this has to be done with the with the spirit of God. If you are not born again, you're gonna to struggle to you're gonna to struggle to to understand anything because the, it is the Holy Spirit that is revealing and and revelating the scriptures to you. The, the Holy Spirit will reveal scriptures to you as you're reading. Um, you know, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit he is the Holy Spirit is the, the anointing in us. Yeah, so everybody's anointed. You know, 
No one's more anointed than anybody else. We are all anointed. You know, the Holy Spirit's in us anointed. Now, someone might be more gifted. It might be gifted in the area to preach, teach, to, to evangelize, uh, if you want to call it apostleship, if you want to call it teach or whatever. But everybody's anointed. Yeah, so the, the, the touch not my anointed stuff, we're all anointed. Yeah, here it is. So the most important thing we're trying to deal with here is that, you know, we're trying to get to understand that, listen, he's talking about prophecy. And I've always said this, look, revelation from scripture and understanding the revelation of scripture is beautiful. It's needed. So we can't operate in gifts and not have the word of God back in it because otherwise the gift then becomes abused because you need to know how to handle it. And so when the scriptures when the scriptures are living bread to you and you eat the living scripture, you know, what I mean, and I'm not talking about a man. I'm not talking about a, a woman or a man of God, a woman of God or a prophet. Or I'm talking about actually eating the actual scriptures. We're talking about Bible. You know, what I'm saying when you begin to eat the Bible and the Lord begins to reveal what the Bible is actually saying to you and actually what it's really meaning like that's why you got to read whole paragraphs that's why you got to read whole chapters that's why you got to read whole sentences before reading just one line that like, if you get into a habit of okay this scripture i've read a scripture in the bible but let me read the whole chapter many of us are using daily uh, daily verses of the day and so what happens is daily verse of the day is a scripture is, is a verse in a whole body of scripture you need to go and read that whole chapter. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I get it that we're all at different levels, but it's not going to be enough for you to eat a daily verse of the day and hear that one line. And it's never expounded on It's You've never got the context of it because you've never read the whole chapter. No, no, no. I need, to get, I need to get you guys to understand. Start reading not just the verse, but the whole chapter. And sometimes read. And if it doesn't make sense, go back to the previous chapter. You understand? Like we, we see when we're when we're when we're you know when we're trying to have microwavable meals, okay, your body's gonna be in a certain shape. When you start eating healthily and start being very conscious about what you're eating, your body's gonna be a certain shape, yeah, and your mind is gonna take on a certain form. And same thing here. So uh, let me just let it go on and we'll, we'll continue. Oh, so at the time you weren't comparing things to scripture. You know, only the 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 thing is that um, what I was doing was. Um, I was quite happily going along with the the you know the way that the Bible gets used in the NAR, which is to sort of um, what do you call it? Like you 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 look for a verse out of context, which you know you can use to make it sound to make it you know mean what you want it to mean. Um, and I was quite happy with that at the time. I didn't realize that's what they were doing. I didn't, you know, I didn't consciously think. Do you remember any of the verses that were taken out of context? Um, big thing that's taken out of context and, you know, a different meaning applied to is, uh, is in the Lord's Prayer. You know, um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what we were taught and what I taught, I literally, my first ever sermon, I stood up and said that, um, that means that whatever's in heaven, we have to bring to earth. Um, and I taught that myself, so I can't, I can't, you know, point the finger, <laughs> you know, judgmentally at people who teach that because I did it myself. Was that something that was your own eisegesis, or did you get that from Vineyard or um, a bit of both? Okay, a bit of both. Mm -hmm. um, that that was actually before that was before Bethel, before my before I was aware of Bethel. Um, but certainly from having listened to hours and hours and hours of um, old uh, vineyard tapes, John Wimber teaching, um, I would have certainly, that influence has certainly been there because that's certainly something that he taught. Um, and, uh, and so, of course, you know, the, the, the idea being, well, is there, is there sickness in heaven? No, therefore there shouldn't be any sickness on earth and that kind of thing. Is, is that where um, Bill Johnson gets that from? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's, it's, yeah, on earth as it is in heaven. Um, whereas, of course, <laughs> I think, it, I can't remember who it was now, I think it was Chris Rosebro pointed out that there's no marriage in heaven. So are we also praying for no marriage? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah um, see what I mean? See, this is, this. you see how that was a great, I love the fact that he added there as well about um, as, it, as in heaven as it is on earth. You, know, you hear many people talking about bringing God's kingdom on earth and we have to institute God's kingdom on earth. Like he just said, listen, you want God's kingdom on earth, my friend, there is no marriage in heaven. So do you want marriage on earth? 
And some of you are married. You see, some of these teachings that people bring out, all right, once you begin to read the word and actually begin to understand it and apply the Holy Spirit to it, it the Holy Spirit will expose falsities. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, the, and the whole point is this. If you're in your word and you're, and you're praying about it and saying, God, listen, is this what this person's saying? Is it true? You know, I think many people don't do that. Many people just uh, want to... They, it's scary for them to think that someone could lie to them. Do you know what I mean? So people don't often want to disbelieve that what they may be hearing may not be correct. But as this man just said, you know, quite clearly, you know, that, you know, he was listening to tapes of messages da, 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 and that inf that infiltrated into how he saw how he saw one or two scripture. Not even he was taking a body of scripture, how he saw one or two scripture, which is that heaven on earth. And so, you know, um, you know, when you hear things like heaven on earth, new apostolic reformation, seven mountains, um, dominion uh, theology, all of these things are encompassed in this, trying to bring uh, kingdom theory. Someone said Miles Monroe, kingdom theory, yeah? That was Miles Monroe, kingdom theory. All of these things trying to institute God's kingdom on earth. That's not what he meant. You as an individual are meant to follow the will of the Lord. You are in the kingdom. You understand? You are part of this kingdom. And therefore, let your kingdom... Let, um, um, our Father who art in heaven, uh, hello be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is going to come. Yeah, what, the kingdom that he's talking about, his kingdom that's coming. You know what I'm saying? Christ's kingdom is coming. And there's also, a, I would even say, there's almost like a kingdom within you, which is that you have the Holy Spirit in you. Yeah, um, the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. Let's talk about, let's say, if we want to talk about kingdom, right? Um, that's the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. So you are supposed to bring the will of God in you. When I say bring, you are meant, to, meant to, uh, to surrender to the will of God in your life. That's what you're meant to do. I surrender to your will of God because that's your kingdom. Just as it is in heaven that people people um, obey your, your, your will, just as I will also obey your will, Father. Help me to obey. Obey your will, not for us to bring kingdom on earth, as in let's make a whole government and let's bring, uh, you know, like there's no, like he said, no sickness in heaven. So there's no sickness on earth. I'm sorry. Uh, there is sickness in earth because we are uh, because of what happened with Adam and Eve. But anyway, let's go on. I think I remember you saying, Oscar, that you would do prophecy in bars and pubs. Is that correct? Yes. What was yeah, that so about? So um, this was part of, again, this is part of BSSM, um, and it was one of the reach out, reach out, sorry, outreach rather than reach out, one of the outreach uh, initiatives, projects, whatever. Um, and uh, we called it spiritual readings. Um, we, we, we went, you know, went to a pub and um, put a, a sign at the bar, you know, inviting people. Um, to come for a spiritual reading, you know, with an arrow to where our table was set up. And um, it's, it's kind of weird uh, looking back because um, in my mind, and I think in everybody's minds, we thought that we were doing evangelism. Um, and we really thought that we were like, you know, really going out there, really kind of... Um, really doing it, you know, for the gospel or whatever, or for God. Um, whereas actually uh, the instruction was to not mention Jesus. <laughs> no, no. Reed, did you hear that, baby? Did you hear that? This is what I'm talking about, man. Yo, listen, see, the Bible gives us a, a situation, a story, where John and Peter in Acts... Uh, please do check it out. Google it. I can't remember the scripture. I'll, I'll find it for another time. But in Acts, okay, um, Peter and John are preaching Jesus, okay? And the council, okay, the, the we want to say the Pharisees and the Sadducees and those who are uh, of the law were saying, they arrested them and said, listen, hey, listen, don't come and preach that. Just don't, listen, we're locking you up for a little while. You locked them up, then they released them because it was going to be havoc. Then they said to them, oh, listen, we're letting you go. But listen, all we're asking for you to do is just not preach that Jesus. You can do what you want, but just don't preach that Jesus. Just don't preach that name. We don't want to hear that name. Do you understand? And you're free to do what you want to do. Deep it. 
that there are that, that even look at this they were, they were instructed not to mention this Jesus why because it's not evangelism it's all about getting people into the church and then getting the church people to believe the system of what is in that church and then getting them to, then getting them to believe in the financial situations and how to get them to reprieve of their money because whenever we're dealing with falsities in the church money sex and power and sex and money equal the power do you understand? Um, and, and this is how people often are controlled. And, and wh when you're dealing with certain places, information control, when we're dealing with cults, and I'm not saying that Bethel's a cult, what I'm saying to you is when we're dealing with cults, and cult means to cultivate, yeah? When you want to cultivate a certain society or cultivate a certain atmosphere, you must begin to control the informational flow. So now people don't rely on the source, which is the Holy Spirit, but they rely on a source called man. So if you're in a place where they tell you not to, to, tell, to, not to use the name of Jesus, uh, you need to question where you're at. You need to question where you're at. Let's listen to a, lot, a few more minutes and then we're going to leave it there. Who instructed you to not mention Jesus? Well, the, 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 the pastor um, instructed was, us. Was that because of Vineyard or because of Bethel? I, th I think, I, I, I think um, and I have since heard from other yeah. people who yeah. have been to to other BSSMs mm -hmm. or the main BSSM, um, but that is a thing that you you go and you do these things, these readings, so called. Yeah. Um, but you don't tell them about Jesus. You don't tell them about anything to do with the gospel. That you reminds much... me of um, Christ alignment and the cards. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. very similar. Yeah. Kind of thing. They they supposedly um, lead people to an, an encounter mm -hmm. with yeah, Jesus, an encounter, which, which is or... so spiritually dangerous, and you could meet yeah. Christ and yeah and so were you doing something similar with these readings yeah maybe? yeah so so we literally we'd sit there um and people would i mean we were busy the whole night we were there we hardly stopped um we'd have people come and sit you know at the opposite end of the table opposite side of the table to us and the idea is that we just sit there and look at them and uh whatever comes into our minds we'd say it um and it was all good stuff you know it was all really positive um you know, I can remember telling, you know, young men that they were, um, that they were, you know, great leaders, that they were going to have, you know, they're going to have influence in their, in their careers and this kind of stuff. And, was that uh, like an ego stroking thing? And Oh, or, yeah. Was there an instruction to do that or instruction to always be positive? Uh, the, the, yeah, the instruction was to be positive. Um, uh they had a um this is i don't know whether this is a bssm thing or a vineyard thing but um they had this um like acronym um or this like saying which was the prophecy words had to be just a sec and the sec is sec um strengthening encouraging or comforting um and if it wasn't if it wasn't one of those three then it wasn't then it wasn't a word from God. Oh my goodness. But if you read the Bible, the prophecy is very confrontive and right. and yeah. often terrifying. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, so, okay. So their so, their definition of prophecy sounds very much like my new age definition when I used to teach psychic development classes and I was telling people, yeah. just say what's ever in your head and don't say anything upsetting, don't say anything mm -hmm. negative which I repent for. I'm so sorry that I was deceived and passed along that deception. I mean, yeah. it's, it's like the same author of the New Age teachings of psychic development and this Bethel supernatural prophecy, mm. same method. So as you heard from the horse's mouth, um, not that she's a horse, I will say that guys, um, but from the horse's mouth, straight up direct saying, look, you know, this sounds like New Age kind of stuff. Um, we have to be very, very careful as, as, as a body um, and, and be aware and be switched on. I think sometimes within the body, we are scared that we should be switched on. We give people too much leeway. Um, and when I say too much leeway, I'm talking about when you're hearing things that are not quite in alignment with God, like I'm still giving you my ear, like you're tickling my ear with, with, with it, you know what I'm saying? Like with stuff that I, it's not, it's not hundred percent. I'm not sure if it's really true. And then we continue to, we continue listening, 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 and it draws us in further and further in. All my encouragement is, I'm not telling you to leave your church. I'm not telling you to go this way, or go that way. What I'm going to tell you to do is get in the word, get into scripture. Someone might ask me, where do I start? Start anywhere. Just start reading. But if you really want to learn how to, uh, if you want to really know where to start from, I would always encourage people to start in Romans, start in Ephesians, because Romans especially is so powerful because of the way that 
Paul actually begins to describe what the grace is and what what God is. And then, you know, First Corinthians 15 talks about how what the gospel actually is. Um, Ephesians talks about, um, you know, uh, that we you know coming into the mystery of Christ. Galatians talks about the fact that, you know, um, um, us being redeemed underneath the law and, and, and getting people to understand these things. You know, so Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, they're very powerful scriptures. Corinthians, very powerful scriptures. Start reading there as well as obviously reading, you know, the 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 so-called gospels, if you want to call it, about Christ. Um, that's also important as well. So, you know, just start reading. This is the most important thing. Start reading. Don't try to understand the whole thing and try to deep break. Just start reading because as you're reading and, and, and you know, I always tell people, pray before you read as well, because you let the Holy Spirit just say, Holy Spirit, I'm ready to learn from you today. Teach me something new because I'm going to read my Bible in a second or two. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm just I just came across it. Literally, I was meant to read my Bible and I came across this and I was like, hey, let's let me let me let me give this to people. Let people see like. This is not an indictment on any particular church. This is meant to say, listen, there are things like this in the body that are happening all the time. Do not think because someone is established or a ministry is established or a church is established that actually God is the one that's leading. I'm saying to you, listen, you must test every spirit. The Bible tells us this. We've got out of the habit of this because we want to be comfortable and we don't like confrontation. The gospel is confrontational. When you begin to preach the gospel to people who don't have Christ, listen, it's not all fairy daddy and daddies. A fairy deli and daddy, fairy, fairy dandy, you know what I mean? So for me, I want to just get people to understand, listen, war is war. And that means get into your scripture, get into your word. More love. Appreciate you guys. Stay locked, stay loaded. More blessings.